I want to read y'all speech. I want to read y'all speech that personally for me, I think is so, so important. This is by Theodore Roosevelt and I believe 1910. I don't know the context. I believe he's in Paris. Um, the speech is probably one of the most popular speeches of all time. It's known as the man in the arena. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who yearns, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming. But who does actually strive to do the deeds? Who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high victory, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. I wanted to share this, this speech and give my take on it because I think this speech is so, so important. I think in this context of this generation, I think this is one of the most important and impactful speeches that we need, right? Because people nowadays, right? And you, I'm a victim of this too. People are so scared to step out of their comfort zone, to be different than the common people in their area, in their family, in their whatever, their community, right? And I think it's so important where if you feel a yearn and your heart, mind, and soul to do something different from the pack, to do so. I think this speech is so important, so impactful. What is your, what is your arena? You know what I mean? It was a little different, you know, it's, it's very different. You know, I wanted to start a little series about just me talking, you know, just me talking, you and me, you know, you could put this in the background while you're cooking, while you're working out, while you're doing anything, right? Just something to listen to and, you know, just ponder, you know what I mean? If you like, if you want me to keep doing this series, run up the likes, run up the comments, you know, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Let me know if I should keep doing this. Let me know uh, any questions or topics you want me to talk about in the comment in the comments. And, um, you know, I can help in the best of my ability. I wanted to go over the speech and give, you know, I wanted to not only dissect the speech, but I also wanted to bring a little bit of a, a biblical uh, support behind it, a biblical sense, I guess, you know. And I don't, by the way, I don't claim to be any preacher. I'm no, I'm no saint, you know, you know what I mean? Um, I'm no better than you. I'm no better than you. I'm no better than you or anyone or anything like that. I'm just a guy, you know, I'm just, I'm just a kid. I'm just a 20 year old, uh, just, you know, trying to do the best I can, you know? So I don't claim to be any preacher. I don't claim to be anything like that. You know what I mean? Uh, but I do want to, you know, but I feel like something like this can help out people. And um, that's all we're, That's all this is for, you know what I mean? All right, let's start with the beginning. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The critic always is going to exist for you. The critic is always going to exist. Sometimes there's not going to be a critic. Maybe there's not even someone who's like, pointing out your flaws or anything like that. Maybe the person who's pointing out your flaws and pointing out what you're doing is yourself. Maybe you're your own critic, you know? I think sometimes that's a good thing though. Sometimes it's a good thing to look back, assess, and things of, okay, I'm doing this right, I'm doing this good, but I'm doing this wrong, you know? That's, you know, for me, for experience, me personally, that could be, how I'm living my life. Uh, are my 
decisions? Are my thoughts, are my actions lining up with God? Am I doing good here? I'm not doing so good there. Okay, let me reassess and move how I should. Or another example, my YouTube channel, you know, this video, that, right? This edit was good, cool. I like this sound with that part of the video. Mm, not so much of a fan of that. You know, that's okay. That's constructive criticism. But when you're beating down yourself, when you're just grabbing yourself and just, you know, that's not good. Because with that, you, you leave yourself down, right? You don't allow yourself to level up. You, you only just, you get in your own head. You get in your own head. You get in your own head, right? And you don't take that step forward, right? You're like, okay, shoot, this is not good. You get, you fold under pressure, basically. I've been a victim of it. Everyone's been a victim of it. It's okay. But we learn from that, right? It's about taking that leap forward and saying, look, this is scary. This is uncomfortable. But I'm going to take that step forward into that arena anyways. I'm going to step into the arena anyways. A good verse for that, Isaiah 41.10. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. With God, we can step into that arena. With God, we could step into that arena with no fear. Fear is from the enemy. God is not fear. You know what I mean? The next part of the speech. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who yearns, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming. But who does actually strive to do the deeds? Who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause. You look at every great, you look every legend, someone that like you look at and you're like, okay, that guy, you know, he done a lot of legendary stuff, right? You look at like a Michael Jordan, you look at like a Mike Tyson, you look at a, um, all, you know, the greats, right? What true greatness, they all had to come from some kind of perseverance. They had to work. They had to train and get out of adversity. If you're doing something that has no adversity to it, more than likely, there's not going to be a worthy cause to it. If you are doing something that is hard, that is not changing you, that is something that's hard and difficult, if you're not doing something like that, chances are the price for it is not worthy enough, right? Because I think, I think, right, you have to go through this part here. You have to go through the struggle. You have to go through the hard times. You have to go through the times where you naturally start not believing in yourself, where you naturally are wanting to give up because you see it's too hard. It's too much of a struggle. It's too much, right? Right there, when you get to that point where you're second guessing yourself, where you're thinking, I can't do this, that's when you know you're doing the right thing. That's how you know, because if you can get through this part, the bad part, the part that sucks, the part that is difficult, then the reward through getting through that is going to be worth it. It's going to be worth something. But you have to go through this because your character needs to mold. You need to be shaped, right? Take a sword, right? You know, a sword, it, it goes through heat. It goes through lava. It gets shaped and molded. It gets shaped and molded. But then out of the, the outcome is a beautiful sword. 
That's the same thing with you. You have to go through the struggle. You have to go through the lava. You have to fight in the arena to become the person you want to be. Two good verses. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Philippians 3.14 Let us not grow wary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. Galatians 6.9 Now, I don't have context. I mean, I'm sure the context is a little bit different, you know, especially for that Philippians 3.14. Uh, I don't know the context, but the message in here, right? Especially Galatians uh, six nine, right? Is that you will reap the you will reap the benefits if you don't give up. You will reap the benefits in a worthy cause. You will reap the benefits. This part is about embracing risk and vulnerability. Who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement. And who at the worst, if he fails, he fails while daring greatly. I think this is one of the most important part. I think this is the most important part. Because failure is not the enemy. Apathy is. Taking risks is important. You need to take risks. Because if you're doing something, right? And you're like, picture this, right? Do you think... Steph Curry, just an example. You think you think every time when he was grinding, when he's shooting for threes, right? You think every time he's making it, right? Maybe sometimes actually. <laughs> but the point is is he got to that level, right? He at best knows the high triumph of breaking the three-point record. But at worst, his character grew at worst. He took the risk and he accepted the outcome. For me, example, a YouTube video, right? I make a video, right? I record it, sometimes edit, all that stuff. I'm hoping, man, I hope this is the one. I hope this is the one to blow up the channel and bring it to a new height, right? But sometimes that's not gonna happen all the time and that's okay. But at least I took the risk. I said, okay, this video didn't work. Cool. Let's step back, reassess, and move on. Right? I took the risk of what I could have done is wait for a perfect moment in the sky. Right? Oh, man. I'm waiting for the perfect moment to post this video. Oh, man. I'm waiting for the perfect moment to post this song. Oh, man. I'm waiting for the... Po yeah. Ah. Ooh. Ooh, that's scary. Ah, just waiting for a perfect moment to take action. But the truth is, is that perfect moment is never going to come if you don't take the action. You need to step in the arena. You need to take the action, right? And look, whatever your goal is, right? Whether it's getting a degree, whether it's um, making money, shooting for... Starter on your team. I don't know what your goal is. I don't know what your goal is. But man, shoot for it. Because at the best, at the best, you know what it feels like to win. You know what it's like to achieve greatness. But at the worst, the worst outcome is you don't achieve it, but you grow as a person. And that, my friend, is important. Quick verse. For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. 2 Timothy 1.7 Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Joshua 1.9 So that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. Fellas, life is going to hit you. Life is going to hit every single one of us, whether you like it or you don't like it. It's just a matter of time. It is a matter of time before life is going to slap you in the face, right? It's only a matter of time. 
life in the arena is messy, but it is rich with meaning and purpose. Taking that risk, taking that jump forward, right? Discarding the critic, whether that's a critic in real life, whether it's your family, whether it's a friend, a friend, whether it's yourself, right? That's holding you back. Whatever that critic is in your mind, whoever that critic is, you need to put it behind you. You need to let it go because that critic cannot hold you back. You need to step in the arena and fight like your life depends it. Chase that dream of yours. Chase that dream of yours. Work for it. Pray for it. Pray for that dream. But prayer with action. You need prayer with action. You can't just sit, oh, Lord, please let me uh, uh, get a million dollars and then just sit back and lay in bed. That ain't going to do nothing. That's not going to do anything for you. You need to take action. A quick verse. Um, Ephesians 2.10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. 2 Timothy 4.7, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. So my friend, my fellow peer, what is your arena? What is, what is your arena? How, what is the goal you want to achieve? What, what Goliath do you need to take down? What giant is in your way? Now, fellas... Thank y'all so much for watching. I know this is um, kind of a different video, right? I've done kind of these talking videos before, but I feel like this is so important, right? And let me know if I should do more of these. I probably will. I'll do a few more of these, right? Um, I don't know. I personally really enjoy doing these, especially helps uh, doing videos like this when it's, you know, getting kind of, you know, I got finals coming up for school. And my schedule is going to be a little busy and things of that nature. Uh, but don't worry. I'm not going to stop any of the, you know, fun content at the gym and all that good stuff. We're still going to be grinding on that. Don't worry. But I wanted to, you know what I'm saying, mix in some flavor to something big, you know. But anyways, love y'all. Jesus loves y'all. Be smooth.